Thanks very much for coming in, Steve. Now, uh, obviously, we need to talk about the future rather than the past. We'll get to the past in a moment. In uh, Pakistan recently, there's been a very, very interesting contest between the Risti Sri Lankans and the very, very Risti Pakistanis. Now, Sri Lanka have now put the cleaners through Pakistan in the one-day series and then the tests. Are these betting results, meaning are lots of money being still made on these results, or is this a genuine state of Pakistan in cricket, i.e. hopeless? Uh, tough question first up. Uh, they don't get any Pakistan, easier, Steve. No, well, I, I hope they do, actually, but uh, Pakistan are obviously a bit up and down and you're not quite sure what they're going to do on the field. And uh, Well, Sri Lanka are on a bad side these days. I think I'll leave it at that. Now, Dav Watmore certainly turned the Sri Lankans around, and so when you come out, when you think about this future summer, is it merely an exhibition of a man kicking a dog that's going to tour around to the Gabba, the MCG, the SCG and so on, with Australia obviously with the boots on, and the opponents, the travelling opponents, the very, very risky subcontinental teams being the dog? Well, I hope so, yeah, it'd be nice, but uh, you know, we've obviously got a good side and we're playing well, and I suppose we're the number one side in the world, so we'll be looking to retain that uh, crown when we play Pakistan and Sri Lanka, but uh, they've got some good players and uh, they'll be tough. Steve, we should have, or just uh, remind people of a couple of uh, moments earlier this year. I mean, it seems forever ago, but it was only yesterday. Let's have a look, I think, when you scored your 200th run against uh, the West Indies in this particular innings. Uh, there it was. Uh, look, That looks like Richie Richardson looking very, very stupid. And there's you. And out they come, the Green and Gold Army, which included, and unfortunately we can't see him here, Fat Cat Richie came out. He came out, he fell over, he was covered in mud. He looked very, 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 very stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How well, did you feel having stupid old fat cat? <laughs> well, it was very unusual, I got a bit. I mean, I got the 200 and I was sort of just concentrating on the cricket and really focused and then all those people run on the ground. I saw there was an Australian guy there playing a didgeridoo, which is a bit unusual for cricket. Yeah. Another guy was bouncing an AFL football and thought, that's pretty strange. And then I sort of smelled bourbon and coke and I looked up and it was Fat Cat, so that sort of capped it all off. It was uh, one of those moments which was uh, very unusual. What did Fat Cat say to you, Steve? It was a, well, um, well, no, mate, well... Yeah, it was a bit like that, yeah, to start with, but uh, I think he said something like, uh, uh, you're a legend, well done, great stuff. You're and then off he went. You're a legend, that's what he said. How did that something make like, you yeah. feel at the time? Did you feel a legend? Did you think, well, a fat cat thinks I'm right? Well, <laughs> it must have been yeah, true. Yeah, sort of. No, I don't know, it was a, a funny moment, as you say, and uh, to see Greg there was very unusual, and I didn't really think much of it at the time, but later on I thought, yeah, that was a bit strange. Now, obviously the whole test series hinged on the first test and making a good start. And uh, Roy and I believe that the master stroke in the Australian strategy was to get that blood clot into Bobby Simpson's leg and get him into bloody hospital for the start. So she didn't have him breathing down your neck and telling you those stupid tactics and you could go out there and play a bit of cricket. Is that how the team felt? And you well, don't have to answer this in words, you can tap for yes or two taps for no if you want to. Yeah. Three! Yeah. Three uh, taps. Yes, well, you were that relieved yes. that Simo yeah. wasn't there. Well, well that's sure. I might say that, but no, no, he's a very good coach and... Uh, we're very sad to see him in hospital. Right. Uh, <laughs> next question. Yes, next question. How's that question. sitting on the fence? Yeah. Steve, I've read your very attractive uh, biography or, or the diary of the uh -huh. uh, of your tour. It's a tremendous <laughs> read. <laughs> a tremendous read. But but when did you find the time to write it? Because I never noticed in all the days you go through day by day by day by day by day by day by day. <laughs> never do you say, oh well, then I had to put the feet up. <laughs> and write the tour bloody diary. You never well, refer to the tour diary in the diary. When did you write it? Can well, I put it to you? You wrote it when you got home. <laughs> you, you might, may well say that, but no, I did write it every day. And uh, once I got home from the cricket, it was sort of back to the room, write down what was going on, then out at night time to celebrate or whatever. And then the pen stopped after that time. Yeah. Now, speaking of that tour, we've got some magnificent scenes here of the final wicket that eventually gave Australia the Frank Worrell Trophy. Yeah. Warney trundles in. It's a bit of a mystery ball. There's certainly the Slow bat. not much about it. And taken by Mark Taylor there at first slip. A tremendous achievement. 20 years we waited for this moment in history. How did it feel, Steve War? It was actually it was a bit of an anti-climax, yes, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's been so tough to beat these guys after 15 years or whatever, and then they sort of caved in so easy on the last day, it was, it was just, as if you wished it was going to be a lot tougher to beat them, but uh, nevertheless we were happy to beat them and we had a few drinks later on. Yeah. And here you are accepting the award. Yes, the, yeah. the, the man the of the series. Yeah, I haven't actually seen that car since that day, I don't know where it is. Yeah. No idea. Uh, well, Simo's probably got it. He probably uh, has. <laughs> Steve, uh, 
winning the series, I mean, it must have been a, a, a tremendous thing for you. And you were, as is clearly demonstrated, you were the man of the series. You topped the averages with the bat. You topped the averages with the ball. People don't realise that, but you did. Uh, now, how do you feel in playing under someone who's not as good as cricketer as you are? Mark Taylor, he's a, look, he's a tremendous bloke, but he's not a, he's not a tactician. Well, he's, he's not a particular... No, Steve, no, fair dinkum. You know, I'm speaking on behalf of... You're a legend. You know, I've spoken to Fat Cat. <laughs> now, in all fairness, the people of Australia that HG and myself have been interviewing for months now, I mean, we've done a poll, we've, we've spoken to about 16 million Australians mm -hmm. who feel that you should have been made captain. You should be captain of Australia. You wear the baggy green more than anyone else. You wear it with dignity, you wear it with aplomb, you score a hell of a lot of runs, and you get a hell of a lot of wickets. You should be captain. What can we do about this, Steve? Should we well, mark you guys selected? Protest. No, I'm quite happy to play, actually. I mean, Mark Taylor is a great captain. He's done a great job, and it's very relaxing being a player and not having to ha handle the media all the time, so... I'm very happy just batting number five and six, bowling occasionally, taking a few catches and uh, not worrying about those sort of things. So, But I'd love to be captain one day if it come up. Uh, can I just refer to an incident? We should refer to the incident. and This is the Kirtley Ambrose incident. Okay. Now, yeah. I, I saw you uh, interviewed, uh, terrific interview it was too, on Andrew Denton's program. Uh -huh. And uh, you, you didn't reveal much, however, <laughs> about what was said between you and Kirtley uh -huh. to fire him up in that way. I mean, is he just yeah. mad? Is he just a stupid bloke? Or, or, or <laughs> no, with a very short like, wick and a very short stupid, fuse? Actually, but, uh... what, what went wrong? Well... Yeah, we're on TV, I can't swear, can I? No, you can't. <laughs> no, you no, can't. This no, show has hardly no. any ratings, unlike no, the Andrew no. Denton show. And uh, <laughs> you can do whatever you bloody well like here, see? I can tell the truth, can I? Yes, yes. you can. Tell no, the truth. No, I'm not going to tell the truth. But uh, I guess we're both under pressure going in the test match. Uh, Curtly, some people were saying he wasn't uh, bowling well, wasn't giving 100%. He was placed in the side, was in jeopardy. I went in that test match after the Brian, Brian Lara controversy. It was his hometown, so I was under a lot of pressure. We both sort of clashed at the heat of the moment. I thought he overdid his sort of Clint Eastwood stare at the end of the end of his bowling mark so uh, I was eventually told him to get back and, and do his job and uh, he wasn't happy. Did you say, well, yeah, get back and bowl you Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, sort of in between that but uh, then what he did he say? Oh. <laughs> he basically said, <laughs> no, he said don't say that and then I said uh, a few more words which he liked even less so yeah. mm. and then he got a bit carried away How and then I got worried. How do you get on with him now? Have you written since and apologised? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be sending him a Christmas card. Explain the sure, situation. Yeah, yeah yes. we're good mates, yeah. Looking forward to catching up with him, actually. But, uh, no, we don't talk much. All right, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, he's an opposition player, so... Yeah. Yes, how do you get on with the opposition generally, say, when you tour the West Indies? Uh, are, they, uh, are there plenty of... I noticed in the book, I think you said Jimmy Adams was the only one who showed up for a beer, even though you put the welcome mat out for everybody. Yeah, to well, I guess in. it's pretty tough after you lose a test series that you're going to have a beer with the opposition, but Jimmy's a nice guy. Brian Lara's a great fella. Richie Richardson's pretty good most of the time. Yes. Until he loses, I guess. Mm. Um, well, when he lost, he said this was the worst Australian team he'd yeah. ever played. I mean, how bad does that make his team look? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's, I it's, mean, it's what a pretty a, strange comment. What about, a but, goose. Uh, yeah, hey. oh, I guess he was under pressure and said the wrong thing. Under pressure. Uh, speaking of a bit of pressure, we've got a bit of footage of uh, you and Mark in a okay. terrific, um, well, we call it rainbow connection happening here. This is when you were 99 yes. against England. Right I'm looking forward to seeing this. Yes, yes, yes this is tremendous. tremendous. Here we are. Ball's bold. You decide yeah. to go for a quick single. It's not on. Chris Lewis comes back and hurls down the stumps and then, unfortunately, you're stranded 99. I suppose you can ask me what I said there as well, eh? What no. did you say to him? <laughs> what did you say to Mark? Um, similar to what I said to Kirtley, actually. Oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was just one of those things in the game and... I guess he was trying to get the single for me to get 100, but uh, he got ran out, so it was disappointing for me, but maybe it's uh, traced back to a childhood incident, I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> I'll get him back one day, don't worry. Yes. But that wasn't the only time he's run you out, though, was it? No, he's always running me out. Yes, yeah. I thought he's you were running But you've often said that you're, you do have a psychic sense when Mark's going to get out. You don't have the psychic sense when you're going to get out. No, that's <laughs> right. Nor, 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 does, nor does he have the psychic no, sense that not, you're no. going to get out, no. you don't have the psychic sense that he's going to get you out. Something like, yeah. It's yeah. a weird one, isn't it? That's it is a weird one, yes, but, uh, yeah, it's funny you say that because I did, there was a test match in Barbados where uh, Kurt Lambert was just about to bowl the ball, Mark was batting, I thought, oh no, he's going to be out caught behind here, Yeah. and split second later he was out, so, uh, needless to say, Mark wasn't very impressed with it, but uh, yeah, right. it does happen sometimes, yeah. Do you ever try and warn him, like... <laughs> <laughs> It might be a tad off putting and it'll probably definitely make him get out, so um, no, I'm trying to do it. Now, 
look, can we talk about the Shane Warne mystery ball? Now, yeah, uh, we're ready okay, well, it's a mystery to me. Yeah, indeed, it just appears to be a mystery to everybody, okay. including Shane. Yeah, uh, I, I understand he's got something that works over about 15 metres. He yeah. can't make it go the whole pitch at the moment. Well, and, yeah. and what is it exactly? Is it, is it just something weird? or Is it a reverse flipper? <laughs> I've got no idea to tell you the truth. <laughs> Maybe it's one that doesn't turn because every other ball turns. Maybe it's the one that looks well, he's like... He's straight ball. He's arm ball. That could be a chair. The straight ball. But uh, if, it's over 15, if it's over 15 yards, it's a bit of a problem because, as you say, the wicket's 22 yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to have to modify it. Well, we wish him all the best and we certainly wish you all the best. Thank eh? you. We do. And I recommend the book for those interested in the tour of the West Indies, the recent Australian success in the West Indies. And on that cheery note, it's time to ask all club buggery viewers, whether here in the Rupert Murdoch disgrace or there at home, to get them together and bang them and thank Steve Waugh.